today we'll be talking about our marine protected areas or MPAs. So our guest from Laguna Ocean Foundation will give us more information on marine protected areas and that definition, but I just wanted to give a very brief overview. So marine protected areas or MPAs are places that can serve and manage and protect that area and that land and water. The majority of our MPAs in the United States are multiple use sites, meaning that other activities are able to be had there. And in this image brought to you by NOAA, you're able to see um, along the United States where we have those marine protected areas. So I urge you to ask yourself if you've ever been to an MPA in Orange County, especially after learning all this information in today's presentation. So at Orange County Coast Keeper, we actually have the Marine Protected Area Watch Program or the MPA Watch Program. This is where volunteers document any type of human use um, in any of our marine protected areas. This includes consumptive and non-consumptive activities. So a consumptive activity would be any type of recreational or commercial fishing activity, whether that be near shore or ocean based. And our non-consumptive activities would be fun things like surfing, scuba diving, kayaking, viewing wildlife, tide pulling, any type of beach going activity. This data is then used by our state and local agencies as well as nonprofits and it's available to the public as well. Um, it's used to make decisions to allocate our resources for our MPAs and it's also very helpful to inform our regulatory agencies when it comes to MPA enforcement. If you're interested in volunteering for this program, please contact Ray, our Associate Director of Programs. His email is ray at coastkeeper.org. As a volunteer, you'll have classroom and field trainings. You'll learn about how MPAs were created, where our MPAs are located throughout Orange County, what the regulations are, and how to identify these common human uses. You'll also be provided with binoculars, data sheets, and access to the online database. And you'll also be able to do these MPA surveys at any of the 25 locations throughout Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, and Dana Point, and they can take anywhere from five to 30 minutes. So without further ado, I'll introduce Claire from Laguna Ocean Foundation, who will take it away from here. Thank you all. Um, as, thank you for the kind introduction, Christina. Um, as she mentioned, my name is Claire Ari, and I work for the Laguna Ocean Foundation as their education and outreach coordinator. And I'm excited to talk about marine protected areas today. Uh, so marine protected areas are specific areas of both our ocean, our coastline, as well as estuaries that have been designated as a, having some special importance, and therefore they have some protection. And only 5.3 of our global ocean is actually protected, while 16% of our California coastline is protected. Um, and these kinds of protections really became a topic of conversation in the 1980s but really became a forepoint of conservation in the 1990s, accumulating with the harmful effects of pollution and overfishing. We started to realize that we really needed to protect these areas. And so this all came, to, came together to form the Marine Life Protection Act of 1999, where the Department of Fish and Wildlife was given permission to look out and seek these specific areas, some of which had already been started to getting protected, um, but to designate boundary lines and what kind of protection they need. Uh, so within the state of California, you can expect that marine protected areas will have different rules. And there are four kinds, but only one of those four kinds don't allow any human interaction. And that's actually the bottom of this little list here. And those are our special closure sites. And they're usually reserved for things like rookeries, which are breeding habitats for marine mammals and for birds. And we don't want any human interaction there because we don't want to disturb anything that's going on in that, in that particular area. So besides the special closure location, the most strict of the marine protected areas are our state marine reserves. And they don't allow take of any kind. No take of things that are living or once living or anything that could be used by that ecosystem, including things like shells, rocks. Um, and then we have two different types of conservation areas, which are not quite as strict as state marine reserves, um, but they do still have some rules put upon them. 
One of those conservation areas is a no-take conservation area. And for all intensive purposes are very similar to state rain reserves. Uh, they don't allow any take as well. Um, but then we also have our state rain conservation areas, which often allow take of particular kinds. Sometimes they're trying to conserve particular organisms or they're trying to conserve a particular part of the ecosystem. So we do have places in Southern California that are trying to conserve invertebrates. So if you're in that kind of conservation area, you couldn't hunt or fish things like mussels or lobster or octopus. Um, but here in Orange County, most of our conservation areas are protecting our near shore ecosystem. Between the high tide low line and the low tide line are called the intertidal zone, which is where the tide pools are. Just talked a little bit about all these different things and talking about what take is, but people don't really realize that take is actually defined. And so take is defined by the Department of Fish and Wildlife is the removal of an organism, even a temporary removal. So things like handling, putting in a bucket or a cup to hold on to for a period of time, um, all of that is actually against these laws. Okay, next slide. Uh, so to kind of give you a little bit of a visual of everything I just said, uh, we're gonna start over on the left side in our no use zones, which are essentially our special closures. As you can see in this picture, there's not only a wide variety, a very diverse variety of organisms that live there, but they're also pretty abundant in numbers. Uh, if there's no human interaction, these animals thrive, right? Um, and the human interaction portion of this graphic are the little white icons. And so then if you move over to the no-take zone, like our state marine reserve or our no-take conservation areas, we do allow non-consumptive use of those areas like sailing or scuba diving and tide pooling as well. And you'll still see quite a few animals, but the diversity is starting to diminish maybe just a little bit. And then we get into our buffer zones, which are kind of our conservation areas in which only things that are permitted are allowed to be taken away from those ecosystems. And so you can start to see that there's just a little bit of fishing involved. And you can imagine that the moment you start to take anything away, the abundance starts to diminish. Um, and then we finally get into our multi-use zones or kind of our open ocean, non-protected areas in which things as far as commercial fishing are allowed. And you're still gonna be able to see organisms there. You're still going to be able to enjoy those organisms, but you're not going to see quite the diversity or the amount. So the reason that we actually have these kinds of designation of zones, a little bit of a gradient, is because these marine protected areas show kind of a spillover effect. So if you're in a marine protected area, especially a no-take or a closed area, those animals that live there are able to grow, thrive, and breed almost exponentially. And then as the ecosystem kind of fills up, they have a spill over into the areas just around it. And those areas are allowed to be fished and to be enjoyed, but it kind of gives a breeding habitat so that those animals don't ever become overfished. So we talked a lot about what marine protected areas are, but just to give you a couple pictures of what they actually are protecting. They do protect things like invertebrates. I mentioned before, besides this beautiful chestnut cowrie, one of my favorite snails. Uh, they do protect things like lobsters and octopus and also beautiful things that people come to look for like sea stars and sea anemones. We also protect vertebrates. I chose this picture because these little gray whales are adorable and we get to see them here in Orange County. This picture was taken um, by a paddle boarder so they come very close to shore. Um, but also the other vertebrates that we protect of of course fish which are food for a lot of animals. Um, and our other marine mammals that we see frequently, like our dolphins, our seals, our sea lions. And all of these animals often are dependent on our algae. So that our algae is also protected. I chose this image of a kelp forest because a kelp forest is not only food, but it is structure and a home for hundreds of species of animals. So it's definitely worth protecting. And then the marine protected areas also protect things of economic or historical importance like our shells and our rocks, but the shells can also be used by hermit crabs as a home. And our rocks are often used as kind of a refuge or a, a protective site 
for animals that are trying to run away from predators or to run away from the sun. And last but not least, marine protected areas obviously protect fun, mostly fun for the next generation, because we want to make sure that people are able to come back to the marine protected areas years and years later and still be able to see these organisms and hopefully in the abundance that they once were. And so in Orange County, we actually have seven marine protected areas. Uh, five are on this graphic. The most northern two are Bolsa Bay and Bolsa Chica Basin, which are in Huntington Beach, so a little bit north of this graphic. Um, and then we also have the Upper Newport Bay, which you can see with number three. Uh, if you've ever been to the Back Bay Science Center, that's where that is located. And then for the southern, more a little bit more southern sites, we have the State uh, Crystal Cove State Marine Conservation Area, and then south of Laguna, we have our Dana Point State Marine Conservation Area. But the ones that have the strictest regulations, our state marine reserves and our no-take conservation areas are centrally located in Laguna. And you can see by the state marine reserve in red and the no-take conservation area in purple, that they're quite a bit larger than the other areas. They actually extend farther offshore and at its farthest point are three miles away from shore. So there's no take of any kind within all of Laguna Beach, protecting all of those organisms that live there, uh, and then hopefully having a spillover effect to the other areas locally by um, as the area continues to thrive. And this whole map was actually, a, a lot of these marine protected areas have been protected for a long time, but what we are currently using is the 2012 Marine Protected Area Network that was established because of the Marine Life Protection Act. Um, and these are the, still what we're using today and probably will for a long time to come. And so because Laguna Beach has such a large marine protected area, uh, Laguna Ocean Foundation was formulated in 2003. And we're the only daily tide, public tide pool education program in Southern California. And we actually work at eight tide pool locations. So it's not just one per marine protected area. We actually work at eight throughout the city. And our mission is to optimize the health of Laguna's vital ecosystems through science, education, and community involvement. Um, we believe that bringing people out there, educating people about it will make them want to conserve the area and hopefully be able to protect those marine protected areas for a long time to come. We also study and monitor organisms that live within Laguna Beach. Uh, and we work closely with, organi uh, with organizations and universities to do this kind of research. And we obviously also work closely with other Laguna Beach organizations like the Laguna Beach Lifeguards and our Pacific Marine Mammal Center. Because if we ever encounter an issue, we're the education, they're the enforcement. And last but not least, we are always growing. Um, since 2003, we've grown in both locations and how many volunteers we have. So we're always looking for more docents and volunteers if you wanna come and educate the public about tide pools. And then the next step for our organization is actually to restore Aliso Creek Estuary in South Laguna. Um, Aliso Creek Estuary is the mouth of Aliso Creek that comes from inland Orange County. And due to people building over it, if you've ever been there, there are some very large parking lots. Uh, it's no longer a healthy functioning estuary. And so we are going to work hard to be able to restore that and hopefully break ground pretty shortly. And so both Orange County Coast Keeper and Laguna Ocean Foundation, along with many other organizations, all participate in the Orange County Marine Protected Area Council. Um, and this is the first group of people that have come together to discuss and protect marine protected areas in California. We were actually established in 1999, right near the Marine Life Protection Act. And so since we were the first, we've actually become the model for the entire state of California. And our mission is to protect, is to collaborate at a regional level to assist and inform the public and partner agencies in order to support the effective management of Orange County Marine Protected Area. Um, we collaborate with county officials, institutional representatives, environmental consultants, academic faculty, nonprofits, and individuals, most often anglers, all to kind of 
come together to manage marine protected areas in Orange County. Um, and we draw on the capabilities of these organizations to help with our education outreach, our research and monitoring, and our compliance and enforcement. Uh, we wanna make sure that all of marine protected areas in Orange County are followed, understood, and cared for. Um, so I showed you some images of some of the local organizations that are very active in Orange County, um, but OC Impact has done quite, has had quite a few accomplishments, um, both with educational workshops, enforcement workshops, as well as creating a overwhelming signage for Orange County, as you can see with this graphic here, which are our good tide puller rules, which are now available at every beach access point within marine protected areas in Orange County. And so we have just a couple rules that we wanted to make sure were very easy to see to all of the public. And so we never, those rules are that we never want you to remove animals, rocks or shells from the tide pools. Um, we never want you to pick up the animals. We just want you to enjoy them where they are. And those both formulate directly into the rules of being in a marine life or a marine protected area. Um, but we also obviously encourage you to walk gently. We don't want to smush anything. And we don't want to turn over any rocks because we don't want to expose any animals that were seeking refuge under those rocks. We want to make sure that they stay safe from the sun, from the air, and also from predators. So Orange County is just one of the collaboratives within the Marine Protected Area Collaborative Network. Um, as you can see, there are 14 collaborative networks where the little orange dot below or just above the San Diego pink square at the very bottom of this state map. Um, and we only have seven MPAs, but all of these collaborative networks help manage the 124 marine protected areas in California. Um, and they're trying to implement a regional collaboration to help create some local resource management. And their mission is to empower the coastal communities and to advance marine protected area management and to encourage ocean stewardship. Um, this provides, the collaborative network provides information, uh, structure support and interagency communication to allow these groups to have a voice in marine protected area management. They've also been able to help create and store uh, different programs through, that can be used throughout the state of California. So there are marine protected area lesson plans for every age group from kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, and then we also have really fun things like coloring books and informational guides, and all of those are free and available to the public. And last but not least, they're also been able to pull together and get us some little mini ROVs, underwater remotely operated vehicles, that are now been distributed throughout the state of California. So we're going to be able to videotape and examine our nearshore ecosystem. So hopefully we'll have some really fun videos coming out and we'll eventually be able to use these for research and monitoring as well. And so last but not least, I just wanted to give you some kind of resource information. Uh, if you're interested in the marine protected areas around the world, we would recommend using the website mpaatlas.org. And then if you're looking for more specific California information, you can always go to the Department of Fish and Wildlife website. And if you're interested about the collaborative network, including Orange County OC Impact, uh, you can always go to mpacollaborative.org. And for us, if you're interested in Laguna Ocean Foundation and what we're doing, please go visit our website, lagunaoceanfoundation.org. Also on our website, you can download a free tide pool exploration guide, which not only gives you our good tide puller rules, that little sign that I, I showed you, um, but it tells you about what tides are and how they work and what kind of organisms you find in our tide pool. And if you're interested in becoming a docent or a volunteer with Laguna Ocean Foundation, please email us. And if you have any questions for, for me specifically, you can also email me directly. So what are some of the things you are working on to restore the estuary? Great question. Uh, so currently we're still formulating the, the plan. It has been established and improved, um, but we're kind of divvying up who's doing what. Um, to restore the estuary, we actually have to restore the whole watershed, which I know is a, a topic for Coast Keeper in some of their other stream videos. 
Um, so Aliso Creek starts farther in Orange County. And one of the big issues with Aliso Creek and that estuary is that there are too many water inputs to that area more than there was historically. So the first steps are to kind of mitigate and spread out where that water is going to go if it's no longer going to go into Aliso Creek. Uh, once that's done, we're going to be able to break ground. Uh, we're planning on removing the parking lot on the inland side of Pacific Coast Highway and planting the plants that need to be there to have a healthy functioning estuary. And so it can filter any of the water that's coming from inland before it gets back out to the ocean. But we got to start up at the top. I don't think we have any other questions. Thank you so much for joining us today, Claire. Appreciate it. Appreciate Thank the Thank you, Christina. So excited to go back and work there this weekend. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you everybody for joining and learning about MPAs.